بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد. Continue on in our study of al aqidah tawasatiya and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with understanding forgive us of our sins and bless us, bless us with uh, ikhlas with thabat and may Allah wa ta'ala bless us with tawfiq in our studies and bless us to do it for his sake seeking his face subhanahu wa ta'ala and may Allah wa ta'ala bless us with jannah to those and bless the Muslims everywhere ameen ya rabbil alameen so continue on in our treaties Shaykh Islam Rahimahullah Ta'ala He said in his trees Ithbat sam'i wal basr lillah Ta'ala So the affirmation of hearing and seeing for Allah the Almighty and we already talked about this countless and countless uh, lessons of ours in the same treaties at the beginning so if you have a chance to go back you'll be able to get maybe some more details but we'll just uh, quickly go through it as Shaykh al-Islam intended it to affirm those two attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses hearing and, and, and sight that he is the all hearing the all seeing and nothing uh, escapes his hearing and his seeing and his knowledge subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's the creator of all things subhanahu wa qawluhu qad sami allahu qawla allati tujadiluka tujadiluka fi zawjiha wa tashtaki ila allah wallahu yasma'u tuhawarakuma inna allaha sami'un basir wa qawluhu laqad sami'a allahu qawla alladhina qalu inna allaha faqeerun wa nahnu agniya wa qawluhu am yahsabuna anna la nasma'u sirruhum wa najwahum bala wa rasoolana ladayhim yaktubun wa qawluhu wa inni ma'akuma asma'u wa ara وقوله ألم يعلم بأن الله يرى وقوله الذي يراك هنا تقوم وتقلبك في ساجدين وقوله وقول لعلم لع وقول لع وقول لعمل فسيرى الله عملك عملكم ورسوله والمؤمنون so in these verses of the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in the first verse, He says, Indeed, Allah has heard the statement of her that disputes with you concerning her husband and complains to Allah, and Allah hears the argument between you both. Verily, Allah is all hearer, all seer. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Indeed, Allah has heard the statement of those who say, Truly, Allah is poor and we are rich. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Or do they think that we hear not their secrets and their private counsel? Yes, we do. And our messengers, meaning the angels, are by, are by them to record. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty says, Verily, I am with you both, hearing and seeing. And Allah the Almighty says, no, Knows he not that Allah does see what he does? And Allah the Almighty says, Who says, uh, who sees you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when you stand up at night for the tahajjid prayers? And your movements among those who fall prostrate? Verily he only, verily he only, he is the all-hearer, the all-knower. And Allah the Almighty says, And say, O Muhammad, do deeds, Allah will see your deeds. And so will his messenger and the believers. All of those verses, they establish for us the, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all seeing and all hearing. And that those are divine attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he possesses. Uh, and his attributes, there is no resemblance between him and his uh, creatures as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's seeing and hearing is perfect 
without bounds and ours is limited our hearing and our sight as creatures are limited and imperfect which is in contradiction to the one who created the heavens and earth that he is the all hearing and all seeing and so that is the primary um, thing we want to gain from those verses pertinent to our study is that Ahl Sunnah they affirm those attributes which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms for himself like hearing and, and seeing and that though and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hears and sees in reality in a manner that suits his majesty and he has no and he is free from resembling his creatures and free from any and all imperfections subhanahu wa ta'ala and as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and we've mentioned this ayat in almost every lesson that we've had where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says laysa kamithlihi shay'un wa huwa sami'ul basir that there is none that resembles him and he is the all hearing and the all seeing so this again this verse in the verse that we just mentioned which was not mentioned in the text there by Shaykh al-Islam as he mentioned it prior uh, prior to this portion of the text where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees himself from any resemblance between his attributes and the attributes of his creatures and this is nafi as we mentioned a negation and then he affirms for himself subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has the divine attributes of being the all seeing and the all hearing or the all hearing and the all seeing so he possesses the attributes of hearing and seeing but it is not like his his creatures as he as he negated that in the in the same ayat Laysa kamithlihi shay'un wa huwa sami'ul basir that there is none that resembles him and he is the all hearing and all seeing so again there's a negation there a negation that there's any resemblance and that there's any shirk or any shirk in or any musha, any uh, sharing of attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his creation and then he affirms for himself which is a part of Tawheed he affirms that he has those divine characteristics of being the all seeing and all hearing and that's a part of his Tawheed that's a part of Tawheed al-asma'i wa sifat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divine and beautiful names uh, and, and attributes subhanahu and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.